in a universe where life does not end at death. We explore the infinite possibilities forged by our very minds. Welcome to Arthadian Anthologies. Greetings, fellow travelers and storytellers. Welcome to a Reborn in Power series featuring two of Evemore's chosen. One of the dusk, and one of the dawn. In the most climactic clash the Core Realms has ever seen. Follow along as we dive into the conflict that curses the realm of Evemore and her children. Sauron. You... have just returned to the mother kind after bloodying your fists to the blood of that wretched Archaean that wretched rune forger that killed William Sore in front of your very eyes Your men are with you. Krogo standing by as you are inside your chamber currently. Just smoldering with anger. The rage that you haven't. As you did get to deal the final blow. Then you hear Come in! You see the door slides open and Krogo stands there. And he bows his head to you before he enters and then he steps inside the door closes behind him and he just looks at you all gone do you want to go after the rune forger his soul bond Not yet. It seems his son was taken as well. Keep an eye, just in case. Of course. Krogo. Who shall I send? We'll discuss that in a moment. I need your opinion on something. Anything, Archon. As you are, you are aware, it was my destiny to slay William Soar. And it was taken from me. You... I didn't want to... May I speak freely? You may. I didn't want to stop you from your 
vengeance on that wretched rune forger. But perhaps it was unwise to end him right there. I understand why you would hold this position. However, he was an ally of the benefactor. An ally? What are we going to do about that? And that's something I will need to debate. However, tell me, if you were in my position... What would you tell her, people, if you were me? Did I kill William? Do I let them know that my destiny was robbed? Or maybe I can spin this around a bit. The mission is to unite, O Reticon. William was not worthy to face me. And now, any threat that may present itself of the Dawn's allies, we will be able to eliminate them. However, the mission still stands. Argon, I know we didn't have much time since you left the Dark Void, since you got out. We went through straight to action as soon as you got out. Some things have happened. Remember, we needed to meet with everyone. But that was going to be after this whole thing, this whole ordeal. Something that you need to know, though. I think I cannot wait any longer. We found another Reticon world. Apart from the Pillar of Moriot and Orogo Kain. Have you sent any scouts? We have, but we haven't made contact We had waited for you. That was very wise. The inner circle will speak on this matter. And we can then discuss how to proceed. Hmm. And to answer your question, Archon... If I were in your position, our people are not very privy to the information that has been gathered about William Sor. They know that there is a chosen, as you have told them, on the other side, and you and your destiny was to slay them. I would tell them the truth. But in this matter, William Sor was, as they call, an Archaean, just like the one that slayed him. His own people were foul and had no loyalty to each other. 
use this to tell them that the dawn of Evemore they need to be shown loyalty because if the dawn of Evemore could choose William Sore as its chosen and surely the dawn needs to learn from the dusk. And then mention that the one that killed William Sor took your destiny away from you was a rune forger. The ones that you are destined to replace. This, I think, is how I would go about telling our people. And this is why you are a commander. I'll take what you have said into great and careful consideration. Thank you, Archon. As it comes to the one that shall be keeping an eye out on William's soul bond. Make it near us if he seems to be taking better into his new role. How has he behaved since my departure? Quick recap. Which characters were the ones that you specifically assigned on Daenerys? It was... It was uh, Scythe Scythe. and uh, Arch Commander Vorman. Arch Commander Vorman. Okay. Yeah. Krogo looks at you. Scythe has kept me informed about a few of the incidents that have occurred. Do you want me to call her in for this briefing? I do. Very well. I'll go check in on her and then have her come over here to speak with you. And he goes to head out. Door opens up. As the door opens up, you go to back over to your desk and you kind of lean over on it. And then you hear a voice in your head. Hello. Argon Saran. It is mother kind. Mother kind. What do you wish to bestow upon me this time? Some information that may be There was a a disturbance there. I felt. I ripple through even more. Well, a ripple. Elaborate. It sounded like the voice voice. William Soares. But it was very faint. Faint to a point of death. A 
yeah, yeah, yeah. It pulled towards the void. A darkness within it. Broken inside. What do you say? Let him fester. If he crosses over, he will no longer be an issue. But if he remains, if he is strong enough, to do so. I'll be ready. Yeah. Good, 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 good. You're doing well. I got Sarah. You have taught me well. And then you feel it. And then the door slides open and walks both Commander Krogo and Operative Scythe. And they both salute you. And then Scythe approaches. You wanted to see me. I do. Tell me, during my absence, Nearest, how was his behavior? I recall assigning both you and the Arch Commander in this matter. She nods. Nearest performed rather professionally. Admirably, there were a few, a few things that caught my eye. He performed routines, routine inspections on the one that has been in our custody for some time. Whenever I would actually go to these inspections, the one, the, sorry, Akon, the, the Radicon we have in our custody from Moyat, the, uh, Rune Forger, he would perform inspections with him. I would attend. One Vorman would attend another. From what we have seen it seems like Nerys is trying to learn rune forging so that he could help spread it to our men mainly commanders if this is the case then he would be too valuable to send on for the task I have at hand. And I'm going to look towards Krogo. Mm. Who would you recommend for such a task? To go... I... I am not sure, uh, Archon. I do think that Nerys I have learned a few of the rune forging abilities so to speak I think it's I think from what he has done actually he has taught a few different commanders these things. Mainly commanders that 
Arch Commander Vormen have chosen for the task that Nereus has been doing. This little side project. It's actually a rather strategic and efficient way that he's been teaching them to a point where he doesn't he is able to only need to go and he actually doesn't need to teach us anymore. We have our own little routine, so to speak, of learning these abilities. There are they are not many though. We only know like the very basics. Apparently there are many, many, many different things that you could do with runes. I'll give you a name when I have one in mind. Very well. And Scythe is like, what is this about? Well, Scythe, you're an operative. As you are aware, William Solbond escaped with his body and his son. Yes. I need someone to keep an eye on them. Allow me, Argon. I am trained and I am prepared to do the service of Yvmar and she bows. You are you have performed exceptionally well as an operative as far as I am aware. Krogo steps forward. Actually, um I think that it, that Scythe is the best candidate for this. Then it is settled. Scythe, you are to keep tabs on William Solbond and his son. And I want you to report this directly to me. Of course. Is anyone else to know of this mission? Only us three in this room currently. I may share this with the rest of the inner circle later, but I will let you know. Of course. She bows her head. And then she, uh, it's like, shall I get started then? You may. <laughs> she smiles. And she heads out. Tor slides open. And then Krogo steps forward. At least that is one matter handled. Anything else we shall do, Archon? No. Let's return home and I'll prepare a speech. I like to see how everything has been running since my absence. Of course. Let's go. And then you see he goes over, door clo- opens and closes, and then you sit there and then you hear a slight come from the codex on well the codex and it's it looks like it's kind of flickering and it shows like a, a a handprint the size of yours there what do you do? Oh, am I, was I currently getting ready to walk out with Krogo, or was he just walking away? He, he was he was he walked out 
he's out of the of the chamber. Um, you're you're still in there. Um, okay, then I'll make sure the door in my chamber is closed and I'm going to answer. All right. You go and place your palm onto it. You. <laughs> Hello, Siren. How is everything going? As omniscient as you may seem, you have quite a lot of explaining to do. William Soar. Cause the ripple through the timeline. Sent himself backwards as you were killing him. Right before you killed him, in fact. And because he sent himself backwards, I had to do some improvising. The only one who was aware of the plans within your squad within William Soar's squadron was the one you murdered after he killed William he was not supposed to defeat him I am sorry for that he was supposed to just stop him stall him for a little until you got there I was not aware that that little That Archaean was the son of one who killed William. Who William saw killed, actually. He was the son of Jeroth Dementor. Can I roll a lore check on this one? Do, do I actually you have don't. any information on no. this? Okay, got it. Throughout the mental world is a part of a group known as the Dark Crest. From before the reset. And apparently he had a son named Pallas. And that son was the one you killed. Then we both had grudges. Well, had. I must keep an eye on that one, though. They are technically still alive. What? From the other timeline. I had to use the other timeline. timeline that William saw used. So I sent him back to stall, but he went too far. I apologize. I will find a way to make it right. In any way, I can. No question. Am I actually seeing like a physical being this time? Like, what am I actually looking at here? You're seeing a white light that's shattering constantly got it so it's not okay so it's not screen. something i could actually roll like a no analyze like well, I can't you do- can you can try to roll and analyze it's just gonna be really really hard you it's basically like hearing the hearing his voice kind of thing i got you um do you want to but mine would probably be too low for that okay yeah so yeah he, he just says that and then he continues to kind of sit there and he's like I know you don't know if you can trust me still after everything that happened in the dark void 
I want you to know that you are the future head of the core. My goal has been consistent since the beginning to unite all Reticon. And I shall continue to go towards that goal. There is another world of Reticon that my people have discovered. Who do you think led them on that path? Which is why I want you to tell me what am I going to encounter there? Are you sure you want me to tell you that? Now why wouldn't you just want me to know? Because the truth is, I don't like like dealing in the deeper goals of my true alliances. I want you to have the free will to do what you want. I don't want... any ill will coming between us. So I've stayed away from the Reticon worlds so that you may handle them. So that you may have the influence. I will help you when you get there. Then answer me this. William Soar was the Dawn and he is presumably eliminated Uh what other forces of light remain in the core the Reticon world Moriat Do you mean other Radicon worlds in the dawn, or do you mean lights throughout the core? The light of Radicon. There are approximately five more worlds of Radicon in the dawn of Evemoor and five more in the dusk. Then I have a lot of work to do. How did William get chosen by those of Moriat. Eve Moore planned it. She wanted to show her people that she accepted the others. That was during her dawn phase. Now you're in the dusk. Anyways, you are arriving back home. (laughs) As that happens, the door opens up. All right, Archon. Or heading in. Then let's go. 
you stand up. You head out. The the, uh, the ship <laughs> lands. The doors <laughs> open up, and you begin to walk out with your men. And as you walk out, you see all of the Redicon inside this hangar uh, begin to salute you as you go past and every and, and there like some of the enforcers look over like that's the Archon oh my gosh it's the Archon and as uh, as you walk up you see the inner circle there waiting for you and every, like all your all your like, commanders are basically standing at at the ready for you as you go down it, it is pretty packed here like this is a large hangar bay that you're that you've just entered into the the main one basically where the mother kind is at and you see a bunch of people who are like working on on uh moving uh, mo- moving cr- like large crates around to different uh, to different areas and going over to to like little like light light beams where they enter into it and it zap some way just like the same technology that you had at the beginning with the ellipse that you would go up to from a robo kind and you see all of them are standing there in front of you. You see Regulus, the Grand Seer, approaches. Oh, Archon. He comes up to you, and then he embraces you. I feel a great weight has lifted from our people. A great force that is no longer in our way. Then we can proceed as scheduled. And he nods, and you see the rest of them kind of walk back. You see uh, the <sighs> the Grand Arbiter near us as he stares over at you. And he's like, Archon, it is great to see you. And then you see Arch Commander Vorman next to him, looking down at him, and then looking over towards you. Good to see that you... You won. We did. But there is much more work to do. But for now, we can celebrate. (laughs) Celebration, you say. I'll need some catching up of everything that has been transpiring here. Of course. After some debriefing, we can get right to work. They all... Nod. Shall we? Let's. You all begin to walk through these, this massive station. You go all the way back to the main, uh, do you want to go to the the main chambers where your, where your throne is? Or do you want to go to like a, uh, mission briefing area? Main chambers. Okay. It's been a hot minute since I've been in there. Okie dokie. Uh, as you kind of walk through, um, you see standing there is Vendez, and he is like walking next to you. He's like, Archon, I am very upset that I didn't get to go and see everything happen firsthand. Everyone has their place. And I can tell that you have been working hard. Yes. As much 
as we may like to get our hands dirty every now and then. There's a greater role and a greater duty. You know, he nods, and as you, as you guys are walking, you see Scythe has, uh, like, you, you guys are all kind of walking yeah. together. Scythe has made her way over right next to Arch Commander Vorman. And uh, the the two of like it, she's like basically like lock and step with him, mm-hmm. right next to him. Um, and you guys continue moving towards the throne room, and as you enter the throne room, the door is <laughs> shut behind you. You go up, and then all of them sit there or stand there and begin to explain to you everything that has occurred. They explain to you that they have found another world, Reticon world, and they have been waiting, sending operative scouts to make sure that it is safe. It looks like a very unique world. The Reticon on that seem to have a tendency towards manipulating types of energies. Mainly energies that are tied to the void. Said that they could be promising a rune of forgers. This is what Regulus says. For your future order. There might be some conflict. Maybe some who want to challenge you as the Archon. But in challenging you, they will fail. It is the Duskian way, after all. Hmm. As they explain this, they also explain that the other places that they've explored. In fact, let's kind of go over everything. Everything that you... What, what were the things that you had sent them out to do? Your inner circle. So... You know, uh, yeah. your, your forces have been fortified. You, you can tell. Like, they... You, you've advanced, and... Uh, is Tenten there? Tenten's there, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, I will. I would like all my inner yeah. circle there if I can. Yeah, Tenten. Yeah. Tenten is there. He explains to you that you guys have advanced to, and he has kept a distance from the benefactor, and but but has mainly focused on learning what he could from other sources, like the primogenitors, the primo, and. From how the Swore Infinite that they, uh, the Swore Infinite tech they used, how it helped them progress as well. And then, other things. Well, what were the other things? Um, I had Nira's. He, well, Nira's is not actually in the inner circle though, but, um, I did have him and Scythe keeping an eye on Arkov. So, if Scythe has anything on that, I would like to hear that. On Arkov? Oh, How about Arkov? Uh, no, Arkov, at, Ar- Arkov has actually been very beneficial. He's actually... They've been, they've been given the chance to go and... basically pirate around and gather more technology... And more understanding of different forms of technology to be able to expand. And so far, they've been able to do so. Also, there has been information about how there are certain there are certain Beulah that you guys had ally- allied with, and they have kind of shown you a path towards towards potentially 
causing some turmoil within the core. But that those talks would need to be had by you, the Archon. You also notice that most of your armor and stuff and, and, and weapons have infused a little bit of titanium into them. Um, like so little that they're almost like AI, not true consciousness, but like they have some artificial consciousness to it. Um, rudimentary, not nothing special. Like they reload on the on their own kind of thing, and it <laughs> reloads with metallic bullets that can ricochet off of things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um and they can also seek as well, do like seeking. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh but yeah, that that technology has been developed. Uh and then anything anything else? Let's see, besides keeping the eyes out, um Vendez um making alliances in the core. Vendez has been making alliances in the core. Um, very small ones. He, it's he thinks that it's going to take some time. Um, but he's been finding certain worlds that could guard that that he could guard that he's garnered influence from, mainly in the darker areas of it. Uh, there's no loyalty in the game. He explains. So it. It's not like home. He doesn't. He doesn't have much fun, but it's kind of the only way that he can handle it is through force, using some forms of force, which is pretty easy because most of them are weak. Which is which is also there's pros and cons to it. If they're weak allies, and you can't really depend on them for much. Plus, they're disloyal. Their only thing is money and fear. So. But, there are, there is this thing, this thing that he's heard about called the Syndicate Web. It's this web that ties into multiple different factions all across these worlds known as command colonies in the foundation region it took him a long time to kind of map out what is found but the pillars are also part of it mainly a big a big a big group organization known as the Exum Dur and there are certain individuals that lead it he wants to try to get in contact with one of them but to get in contact with one of them, that's a difficult. That's a very diff- That's going to take some time, he explains. But, yeah, anything else? Let's see. Uh, Commander Maroon and just overall leading. Like how the people Sultan, are still loyal. Sultan Maroon? Yeah, Sultan Maroon. Oh, yeah. Oh my God, I said commander. I'm like, yeah. so shameful. Yeah. Well, I mean, all of them yeah. were commanders yeah, one at one point. point. Yeah. <laughs> Except for a, a few of them. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, uh, Sultan looks over at you, and he says, oh, The people, the people have been loyal, Archon. Everything that we do, they are exceptional. We have grown in efficiency. Our economy is booming as well. We have grown to have abundance of food supplies everything shipping rots have been stable no no new threats that have come out of everything it seems we are in the clear to expand out even more and in a way we actually did Vorman worked alongside me and 
or we came up with a plan to send out forces to, to colonize more worlds. Along with Tenten, he helped us with building, well, planting the seeds of the Zakite and expanding. We now occupy hmm, approximately 15 worlds. And then I'm going to look towards Arch Commander Vorman. And our military. <sighs> he just stares at you and he smiles. Nothing to fear except ourselves. Then we should be ready to expand. I'll look into your plan more carefully. But I seem to be satisfied with the basic gist of it. All right. You have all done well in my absence. There is still much to do. However... Not only am I, am I proud of all of you, but Eve Moore is as well. We did strike a blow against the dawn. As unexpected the circumstances were in doing so. But the goal still stands... We're here to unite all Reticon, and that means expanding to the rest of the Duskian worlds, and then introducing ourselves to the core. And they all bow to you, kneel to you, and then look up to Eve more. And as you look up, you see her smile. And she looks at you. You hear. Thank you. My chosen. My. Archon. You see them all. Stand up. And. As you stand up with them. You walk out. You go to, well, the bridge on the main ellipse of Orokokine. And you see everything, all the people who are, who are manning the stations all, all look to you stand as you enter. And you see the, well, it looks like a podium and a screen <laughs> facing you. What do you do? I'll walk up to the podium and begin a speech. All right. Can I show makeup on the spot? (laughs) (laughs) Well, as you step up, you see it (laughs) shines on you. And... You see all your inner circles behind you as everyone is watching. Radicon of the Dusk. Eve more chosen. We have struck a crippling blow to the dawn. <sighs> oh, oh, you hear all, all the people inside here cheering. And then you also hear faint cheers outside um almost like a chant outside and and as you look over you can see beyond where where you see it looks like a large holographic image of yourself is projecting towards a bunch like a huge crowd of people outside and they're all like chanting 
in unison and continue. One of the best warriors of the dawn was slayed today. But I must confess he perished before I even had a chance to take him out. They all kind of stare at you. Like, oh. You see, the dawn was too weak to face me. <laughs> and he perished before the attempt. And there you see all of them are getting hyped up. <sighs> it was far too easy. I was cautious and I still rem- will remain vigilant. However, we are far stronger than we once thought. And as I have returned here in the short time I have been here, I can see how much, how much we advanced, how far we have already come. New worlds being colonized in the name of Evemore. More Zekite being planted in my time in the void on my pilgrimage. Taught by Mother Kine. Hear me. And I'm going to use one of my like telepathic powers. Yeah, okay. You, you, you get this rush as everyone. You hear, oh, I can hear his voice. What? And then they're all like, oh. Feel my presence. Oh, they're all like, as I have transcended. They all like, oh. you can see all of their, th- through all of their eyes. I need you to warn me a discipline and we'll check. Uh, okay. Let's get it. Oh, wait, I can't use that disciple's will thing. Is it Siron? Urgh. He has a high... I know, oh, yeah, well, I know he's got a high stat, but still, it's just, I, use, I like having... But the feet, the feet. Oh, yeah, I have the feet for the yes, plus fives. Yeah, yes. thank you, thank you. So, let, let me calculate this for a sec. Okay. I'll roll. Here we go. 29. 29. You feel the rush of uh, omnipresence rush over you as you see and hear all of them and you feel their strength. And as that comes to a close, We are going to transition. Stepping through a darkened chamber, a spectral blackened figure walks over and then pulls out a darkened orb and grabs onto it. And then you see, come on out, my embodiments. And then (laughs) multiple other spectral figures appear. (laughs) 
Oh, Castidin, we had so much fun with the Chosen on the Dawn. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Eve more. Eve more's will has got into him. He is broken. He went on to the other side, and I toyed with him. I looked on to him, and I posed as one of his deities. He... He is broken, my friends. And they all... <laughs> oh. <sighs> but, but... Eve Moore is not finished. Eve Moore is not finished yet. <sighs> Guess what? Guess what's even the best part of all of this? My impediments. And they all... Yes, yes. What is it, Casted? And they... You see, this one just walks over and begins to pull out multiple, what looks like spectral blackened orbs. Olium Sore was the first piece of the puzzle. The next piece is one in the dawn. Not yet born. We must go to the one known as Azan. We will turn him for the Archon. And then the Archon will be able to mend both dawn and dusk together. <laughs> oh, it's going to be wonderful. Seeing even more one strong and loyal as this happens you see he's ripped what is it what is it Cassidy <sighs> shut I'm being called I'm being summoned Arr. Oh, is it? Is it the tie you got? You got when you messed with Raikyo? Yes, yes, yes! I don't like it. It is the curse of this... ...mission. Stepping through a expanded region full of clouds, walking through a golden gate and closing it. The form of Raikyo steps into a large chamber. We're standing there. Miss Magenium. She looks back at him. Well, Raikyo. I need you to come with me. Come with you. Where shall I go? Where shall we go? When was the last time that you met with the other Regals? 
other eagles. Um, I take it it was before the reset. Mm. As I thought. Well, you'll be accompanying me, and we'll be speaking to them about the case of William Sor. Oh, understood. And then, <laughs> entering into a massive space, a dodecahedron prism, where multiple places of it almost looks like large pyramids are spread around actually not even pyramids they're tetrahedron and then they all <laughs> open up seven of them well yeah seven of them and stepping out of one of them is Magenium with Raikyo, as well as the other six. They all step out. One being Evemore. She looks over and she smiles at the rest of them. Another being Votonic. He's in a suit. His, uh, his entire face is filled with stars and galaxies. And he holds in his hand an apple that <laughs> opens up and he bites into it. And then another one appears with what looks like the form of a large Newtonian steps through. And then a gaseous being flows through Cosmos and Quantumo. Then a large bird with fiery wings, Venus. And lastly, Stepping through is a is a armored plated robotic organism Synchronous and Raikyo <laughs> steps in front of them. Votonic speaks. What happened with William Sor? I was spoken to by Voton. He used quantum vision. And Quantumo says, Indeed, he did. I am sorry, Votonic. But it didn't go very well. And Votonic lo- uh, looks over like hmm. what is going on synchronous I can't see anything I am blinded still Magenium Eve more. What is happening with us? And Magenium looks over towards Raikyo and then looks over towards Eve more. He was your chosen. I tried. Give him a chance 
and he actually succeeded in defeating one of the titans and laying rest the others. But then we have all of these other occurrences across the other realms. You were toying with him, Evemore. Why? And Evemore looks over, he's like, Come on. Come on, all. Let's, let's, uh, let's just take a breather and let's. Uh. And then Vot- Votan Ick looks over, he's like, No! Explain yourself now, Evemore. Are you having your... Is your dusk acting up? Listen, I... William... I loved William, okay? I loved him. But he... (laughs) He's not a part of me. And... Johnny looks over. You chose him before the reset. What's changed, huh? He's not a part of me. He's he's not a part of me. I wanted someone to be a part of me. I just wanted. I wanted to see. And she looks over towards Rikio. And Rikio looks over towards Magenium, like just really quickly. And then Machenian looks at him. And her eyes open up, widen. Where's Rikyo? What did you do with my Rikyo? And she looks over towards Eve more, and she's like, I didn't do anything. What are you you talking about? He's right there. (sighs) Come here, Rikyo. And Rikyo just stands there. It's like, (gasps) Oh. Yes, Majanium. Come here. And then he gets thrown and thrust into Magenium's neck and then his form <laughs> turns spectral darkened and he's like <gasps> you you used where is Raikyo and Evemore's like cast it in Kasten, stop. Just tell her. He is in the... He is in the... Another... He is in the planner unity. You said... You sent him away. How? How? I I know a place <sighs> If you want to fight them You're gonna have to You're gonna have to send some Out Some of your kind Or yourself But if you leave He's gonna watch Arkaya and Votonic is like, Enough of this! Let him go! Magenium. And Magenium is like, What? Votonic? You're not. I am not. Eve Moore? Look at me. Yes. Yes. I want you to wipe out your 
dusk. What? I, I, I can't do that. You're gonna wipe out your dusk. And if you don't, I will send the entire Guardian Order after you. Botonic. But it's me. It's, it's, it's Evor. I know. I have seen you at your lowest. And I've seen you at your highest. The reset has affected you. You need to cleanse it now. Or I will do it for you. Starting with him. And she's like, but Castanin is my. Castanin is my. And you see the spectral form looks over. Eve more, no. Please, please don't. Don't. Do it, Eve more. You have. You have broken a part of. An integral part of our cohesion. I thought that William could be a bridge between everything. But it seems like the most broken among us are breaking our very inhabitants. And even more steps forward. It's like, don't make me destroy you. Even more. You know I can do it. And she looks over at Castellan. Goodbye. My. And she puts her hand out and says, Even more, even more now. Please, please. And you see if no I'm sorry. <laughs> you wake up, Sauron. You feel a rush out of you for a second. And then you hear the voice of you more. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And you feel something get pulled out of you for a moment. Like it's being, it's being covered. Like it's being trapped, closed. Find a way, my Archon. Find a way to free it, to free Castellan. Or else your people will surely crumble. Destroy. Destroy the Guardians. And then... You feel yourself... (gasps) Something just left you. And then...
standing there is Magenium, holding a glass of wine. Neum appears. Shall we send anyone out to go to the plane of Yudidi to find Raikyo? Who is in charge of his domain currently? Um, well, we're, we are having Armistice watch over it currently. Keep that for now. Is William inside there? Um... Magenium? William isn't... around. He faded away. And she looks over. What? He faded away. Faded where? I need to know... What his mindset is. Maybe if I share with him the information that we just witnessed, he'll feel better. He'll be more at ease. I think he's in purgatory currently. Pur- purgatory? Yes. Does that mean that, yes, he's uh, being brought back to life, but he's in coma? Keep an eye on them. Now. Now, Neil. And she's like, okay, okay. The aliens with him. A hand. Two hands. One on each. Warm. Close. And then you hear the voice. Of Thadian. Father. I am here. Please. Listen to my voice. Do not sorrow. I will be strong. I will protect everything that you hold dear. I will face the challenges. But you know, and I know, that you will fight. That you will still fight. That you will fight through me. With me. And... (laughs) He looks over towards Ariel. She's asleep, holding your arm. And then Thadian huh. What? Just How 
How long will I be gone? All right. Send me. Now, please. And then you feel like <laughs> something hit your leg, William. Like his head. And then you hear, huh? Tadian? Tadian? Hey, are you okay? Tadian? Tadian? Someone? Someone come, come and help, please! A door opens up. What happened? Tadian's unconscious. He's, his pulse is still going. What, do you know what happened? I, I, I woke up from him, his head hitting. William? All right, I will check on him. Do not worry. Um, just stay with your, with your soap band. I will be right back. And then you see, you, you feel something get pulled away from your body. And then, and William, I'm here. I'm right here. I'm all right. You got banged up more than me. Please come back to me. And then you, William, hear a sound, a voice, your son, father, 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 and you whip, whip out, and you see you're in this, it looks like there's lightning bolts all around you. Streaking all around you. A plasma field all around you. Your body is hovering there. In the darkness. And then you see a... A form of... Thedian. Appear. Father! Oh my gosh. It worked. It worked with Neum. Father, it's me, Tadian. Are you okay? <laughs> they come to torture me, boy. No, 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 no! It's me. I, I'm, I'm telling you, it's me. It's me. I, I can prove it. I remember when we were going on the mission to get. The halberd of Ulysses. I was too weak. I... I couldn't even make it... to the temple. You had to drag me and carry me. It was only me and you there. It's me. Was he even watching then, too? No, 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 no! Father, please, please, please... I can get you out. I can get you out. Come with me, please. I beg of you. Neum will explain everything. Neum? Where, where is she? She isn't with me. She, she spoke through the margin link. You can't speak to her until you wake up and I'm the only one who could get you out all you have to do is take my hand I'm gonna be like very 
very puzzled, but I'm thinking back. I'm thinking, maybe there's a way out. <laughs> Can I run an analyze check on Thade? Sure. I am going to roll a D100 for this to see. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Where is my other one? I need my metal dice for this. Oh, there it is. Got it. Okay. Well. Ready? I got 23. Analyzing on him, he seems to be telling the truth. He seems to be telling the truth. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like barely look at him as if only like halfway looking, like you know, one of those yeah. kind of. Yeah. Father. I'm here. Then what happened to you? What do you mean? After I shielded you from the Skoda, what happened? Mother came. She got us out. She took us to the Soul Weaver. I soul bonded the two of you. Said that you would be the only one that could bond your soul back to your body. Then where is my body now? With us. You're... You're in a purgatory state. Where specifically is my body? The nebulae convergence. In a hospital bed? The, or on a, the world of the soul bond or the soul weaver. Uh, completely away from any other signs of life. No one knows where we're at except for us. Please, take my hand. I don't know how much longer I could stay here. I'm going to convey a half grin, and then I'm going to slowly reach out for his hand. Half grin like crazy grin? Kind of, yeah. I need you to roll, roll me a... Deception? Sure. Twenty-eight. Okay. He looks at you. And he... He pulls his hand away a little bit. Are you all right? I am You seem You seem like you're hurting, Father I'm here I'm so sorry Sends everyone to their deaths. No. No. Father. The mission.
mission was a success. For whom? I didn't get to tell you this. It was all planned. They saw everything. Zeratul, my friend, that I told you about, the dust corrupted him and used him against us. The Empress, Ayuda, tried to convey a coded signal to Zeratul. Pallas was the son of Jeroth. Every single thing was planned. And come with me so we can defeat them. All right. And I'm going to like slowly extend my hand over. You slowly extend your hand over. You grab onto it and you... (laughs) Your eyes open up. And you see before you is Ariel looking at you. Her eyes are tearing up. And she's like, Oh my god! And she goes and gives you a huge, huge, huge embrace. But she grabs and embraces you. Oh my god. Oh my. You're, you're back. Ariel. I'm so sorry. No, no I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I should have came sooner. There's no way you could have known. They knew everything before we did. How are you feeling? Is everything okay? She begins to caress your cheek. She begins to ch- check your, your vitals. As she... She looks at you and you see like, I, 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 need, I, need, to, I need to check you. And then you see her eyes begin to glow and she checks your entire body. Can you? Can you move your legs? I... You check them. You can't feel your legs. I'm trying to like use my arm to see if I can move my arms to fill around. Can I even move you, my arms? There is a large strain on moving your arms. I my legs. And then you hear <laughs> You see with Dadian. <gasps> Father We did it and he comes over to you and he grabs onto you, he's like and then Ariel looks over and he's like what happened? You... You helped me bring him back. She wants to tell you what, what happened. But only when you're ready. She doesn't want to rush you. This is 
Senhor riu. I can't feel my legs. Why can't I feel my legs? You see Ariel, tears in her eyes. I think your... Your brain was damaged. Mainly your... A lot of your motor receptors. I think you're paralyzed. From the waist down. I don't know if... I don't know if we can fix it. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start like notice, kind of like note, somewhat noticeably shaking, but I'm trying to shrug it off as best I can. Go ahead and roll me a discipline check. Disciples will. Thirty-one. You hide it enough to where Ariel doesn't notice it. Thadian does notice it. And he kind of grabs your arm, looks at you, and then he nods as if you know exactly what he means. Exactly what he told you as soon as you got out. that you'll defeat them. Ariel Ariel gets up. (sighs) Do you need anyone to come? Here. Or Callus and Forger Vale. That is all, please. I don't want anyone else to know. All right. I will get them both. She nods. And you see, she pulls out a room and then (laughs) opens an arc rift. And she... (laughs) Walks through it, it closes. Thadian looks over at you. I want to tell Mother. That you tell her on your own time. I'm gonna rest my arm on his shoulder, but like, of course, I struggle to move the arm in the first place, yeah. but. We will defeat our enemies. Uh, And he smiles and he stands up and he kind of pats you on the shoulder. You rest up, okay? Mother will get to them soon. I love you. I love you too. He walks out. And as that happens, William coming inside. (laughs) Are either Vil and Grand Sage or Killis? As you sit there. You begin to talk to them. Ocellus grabs your hand and he says, 
I am so sorry that this has happened to you. I wish I was powerful enough to be able to see beyond in such a way. But I have grown too old for this. Bale steps forward. He looks at you. You started a movement, brought people together. You, you helped us lay waste to a threat that is no longer a threat. We are in your debt, William. Then please, let no one else know you've seen me today. He closes his eyes and nods. I am aware this is what Ariel said. On occasion, I would still like to meet with you both. Much of this, nearly every point, was planned ahead by them. You must let everyone else think I'm dead. And, Master Forger, Watch out for Empress Ayuda. There were many traitors within our groups, within our ranks. And Grand Sage Palace is the son of Jaroth. And it veil looks down. He is dead. How? We're not sure. And Ariel Ariel says, The one, the Black Radicon, that came to face you, he's the one that killed him. The dusk has arrived. It won't be long until he moves towards Sargon and the rest of Moriot. We won't let that happen, Father. We will plan very carefully. They are not. And with that, we will end this series. Thank you, William. And thank you, Siron. And thank you, Jaren, for this entire thing. Gave my heart out for this one. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And thank you all for listening to Dusk vs. Dawn series. It was a long one and a very eventful one. Um, And we're going to have a and a bonus episode after this one to talk all about it as much as we can remember, at least. Um, but thank you for listening through it all. And if death comes to you, may you be 
reborn in power. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And credits. I thank you for listening to the Dusk versus Dawn Reborn in Power series. With the epic tragedy coming to a close, there are still several questions lingering in the background, just waiting to be answered. Not to worry, for you'll be getting a few more entries following this series that will dive into events that come after the series and even tie into the greater New Age campaign. So until then, be safe, stay safe, and if death comes to you, may you be reborn in power. <laughs>